record. Okay, hello, I'm back up in the mountains. I'm not sure, again, if this is gonna work because I record these videos with my phone and I don't have a ton of battery left on it, but I thought I would try just in case. Um, I decided that today I'm gonna read some from my short story, Forbidden Fruit, which is about Anne before she became a lead, her young life. When I was writing Dream of Deliverance, Anne was one of my favorite characters. I just, I just really liked her and thought that her strength and having to sort of be how she was in order to handle the really impossible situation she was in was very admirable. And I thought, I don't know, the way that Anne's story ends at the end of the book was really hard for me. It was one of the things that I did not like having to write. So it was fun to go back and be with Anne again and write a story that kind of explained why she was the way she was and also um, added a little something and introduced a, a new character who's going to show up in Dreaming of Deliverance too, and that's Reg. So I'm not sure how much of this I will get to, but I'm gonna do the first part now and I will record the, next, the video of the next part. It won't be up here. It'll probably be someplace closer to my house. Forbidden Fruit by R. E. Chambliss. The dreams invade my sleep, filling my mind with people and events that might not be real. Sometimes they are memories of my time in Trey. Other nights, all I hear is my name, Lindsay, called again and again. But sometimes the dreams are something else, glimpses of someplace else. Anne struggled with the shovel. The ground was dry and hard, which made it tough to get the furrow started. She'd only managed a dusty dimple so far. The sun, relentless as usual, sat in mid-sky. She'd hoped to be back to the settlement by noon when the heat peaked, but there was no chance of that now. At this rate, it'd take a week to get the tomatoes planted. She pressed harder with the point of the shovel, willing the ground to break open underneath it, her arms shuddering with the effort. Hey there, need some help? Anne looked up at the sound of the unfamiliar voice. She wasn't scared. She was almost never scared. But she gripped the comfortingly solid wooden shovel handle in both hands anyway, just in case. Most people in Stanlow left her alone, but this could be a test. She needed to be ready. Hi. The stranger bounded up to her and extended his hand, thumb side up. You're Anne, right? He grinned, and she forced herself to release the shovel handle with her right hand in order to clasp his briefly. Had she ever seen teeth like his? So white and so straight? She gave him a tight-lipped smile and nodded. Who are you? she asked, relieved that her uncertainty wasn't audible. Her training and her nature kept it in check. I'm Reg. I'll be your trainer for the next... Oh, I don't know, few weeks, months? He laughed. I just started and they haven't told me much. That's typical, she wanted to say, but she kept quiet. At 17, she was no longer a child and she'd never been a fool. She had a sense he wasn't stupid either, even though that wasn't obvious from his appearance. He looked to be in his early 20s, which was much younger than her previous trainers. His hair was black, short in back, and long enough on top to be wavy, almost shaggy, and he had large, amber-colored eyes. His face was boyish, with rounded cheeks and a dimple in his chin. His attitude was boyish, too, at least on the surface. But there was a hint of granite behind his charm. She'd been taught to read people, and she could see it. And if he was Adele Trainer. She had to be prepared for pain. She laid the shovel on the ground next to her pathetic trench beginnings, then straightened. All right, Mr. Reg, I'm ready for my first assignment. What do you require of me? 
Whoa, I don't know who you've dealt with before, but that's not my style at all. I'm here to learn from you too, and it's just Reg, okay? No mister. He cocked his head and squinted past her at the vast, dusty flat towards Stanlow. The cluster of Quonset huts and tin sheds that made up the majority of the community, small and brave looking, three miles in the distance, flashed out from the stark landscape. Stanlow's salt ponds lay in a patchwork of red and gray behind the settlement, and Dead Lake spread out behind that to the base of the mountains. He laughed again and shook his head. I can't believe I'm really here. Anne's mind swelled with curiosity. No one had ever talked like this to her before, in a manner that was without restraint, friendly even. The other trainers had been informative, but never revealed that they had wants or emotions of their own. Everything they said and did related to serving the Loesch. And her foster family, the other people of Stanlow, and even Stanlow's lead, Mr. Martin, treated her like a geyser, something dangerous that could spew boiling water at any moment. You had to keep your distance from a geyser. Of course, the Loesch talked to her. Once a month, during her required sessions with them at the Dell, they spoke to her extensively, telling her what would happen if she didn't follow their instructions exactly. More pain. This Reg, then, was a surprise. Still, there were those glints of iron behind his smile. As tempted as she was to respond to his friendliness, she'd been virtually on her own her whole life. She was almost fully trained and ready to lead. She wouldn't express any vulnerability. Reg's grin became more intimate somehow. Why don't we start by you telling me what you're doing all the way out here? I'm digging furrows, she replied at once. For tomatoes. The soil shouldn't be so alkali this far from the lake, and there's a spring beneath the surface, although it's small. I still may need to haul water to supplement it, but I believe cultivation is possible. Tomatoes, huh? Sulfur would up your chances, make the dirt more acidic, you know? Maybe I could bring some next time I come. He reached his hands up over his head and stretched his shoulders. But don't you guys get fruits and vegetables with your supplies? Anne froze. Was this her first test? Tomatoes could do well here, and of course we would share the surplus, she said after a beat. Stanlow isn't able to contribute as much as the other communities. Salt is about it. Why, though? He nodded his head toward the barely disturbed soil. Seems like a lot of effort, and it's not something you've been asked to do, is it? Anne inhaled slowly, wanting time to gather her thoughts. Normally, she wouldn't speak her mind to a trainer sent by the Loesch. But normally, Loesch trainers gave no opportunity to do so. I'm to be a lead, correct? She said at last. Taking initiative is part of that. Leads can't consult our hosts about every minor issue that arises. Hosts? He wrinkled his forehead, clearly perplexed. Oh, you mean the Loesch. Well, you have a point there, but you're not a lead yet. The teasing, playful quality had drained out of his voice, and his golden eyes were so solemn now, they almost smoldered against his tanned skin. Then he smiled, and his gravity Then he smiled, and his gravity vanished, and something unfamiliar flipped over in her stomach. Ah, don't worry. I don't have a problem with it. But those other guys... He waved across the flats in the direction of the dell. They may not like it. Anne didn't know how to answer that. It's okay, he winked. I'm not going to tell them, that's for sure. Let's finish digging and then you can show me around Stanlow. Certainly. And knock off the formality, okay? I can teach you what I need to teach you just as well if we're friends. Once Reg broke through the hard crust of the surface, he had to jump on top of the shovel several times in order to do it. The digging went, the digging went quickly. 
the muscles in his arms bulging and flexing below his short sleeves. Anne had never seen a shirt like his before. It was green and made of some kind of stretchy fabric that adhered to him in a way that appealed to her and made her nervous at the same time. Reg didn't seem to notice her reaction. He whistled as he dug, sometimes pulling the dirt clumps aside with his hands so she could compact the sides of the furrows with the flat of the shovel. He also asked her questions about herself, as if he was actually interested in what she thought. Nobody in Stanlow talked to Anne unless they had to. Chit-chat with the girl training to be a lead, and you risked drawing Loche attention to yourself, which no one wanted. And, of course, the Loche themselves were neither chatty types nor interested in what they might learn about her via casual conversation. Anne was merely their tool, if she was lucky. If Anne was lucky, she'd, su she'd successfully complete her training, receive the mark of leadership, and then be sent away from Stanlow to another community to lead. If she was unlucky, she wouldn't. In her more optimistic moods, Anne thought the failed lead trainees were merely killed. But the rest of the time, Anne knew there had to be more to it than that. Death seemed too easy, and the Loche never made anything easy. Okay, I'm going to check and see how much time we've recorded. Okay, I think I'm going to wrap that up now. I'm 11 minutes and 35 seconds into it. And like I said, I don't know how long my phone battery is going to last. Um, I really enjoy making these videos. I hope you enjoy seeing them or listening to them if you're listening to the podcast, audio podcast version of this. Uh, you know, Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions for me, if you have any feedback, you know, definitely give it to me. I love to hear from you guys. And it really does help keep me motivated uh, in my writing because I want to finish the next story so I can share it with all of you. So have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.